Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. We're God's Church of Love on our Tuesday meeting to Isaiah chapter 5. Now will I sing to my beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. He goes on to talk about his vineyard, how he fenced it, how he, he did everything, he done did he He did everything for his vineyard that he could do. All right. And he asks, what more could I have done? Okay. Now, verse 7 is the explanation. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of, of Israel, and the men of Judah his pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment, but behold, oppression. For righteousness, but behold, a cry. Woe unto them that join house to house, that lay field to field, till there be no place that they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth. In mine ears, said the Lord of hosts, of a truth, many houses shall be desolate, even great and fair, without inhabitant. Yea, ten acres of vineyard shall yield one bath. Wow. <laughs> a lot shall become little. That's what they're saying in, in essence. And the seed of an omer shall yield an epath. Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink, that continue until night, till wine inflame them, and the harp and the vial, the tabret and the pipe and wine, and their feast, but they regard not the work of the Lord, neither consider the operation of his hands. Therefore my people are gone into captivity Activity because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. Therefore, hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure and their glory and their multitude and their pomp and he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. And the main man shall be brought down, and the mighty man shall be humbled, and the eyes of the lofty shall be humbled. But the Lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment, and God that is holy shall be sanctified in righteousness. Then shall the lambs feed after their manner, and the waste places of the fat ones shall strangers eat. Let me put it in my words. And the and the, the, the crap of the fat cats, the strangers shall eat up their goods. All right. Yeah. Woe unto them that draw iniquity with cords of vanity and sin, as it were, with a cart rope, that say, let him make speed and hasten his work, that we may see it, and let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw nigh and come, that we may know it. Woe unto them that call evil good, and good evil, that put darkness for light, and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes, and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine, and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteous of the righteous from him. Therefore, as the fire devoureth the stubble and the flame consumeth the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness and their blossom shall go up as dust because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Therefore is the anger of the Lord kindled against his people, and he hath stretched forth his hand against them, and hath smitten them, and the hills did tremble, and their carcasses were born in the midst of the street. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. And he will lift up an ensign, an ensign is a sign, 
and he will lift up an ensign to the nations from far and will hiss unto them from the ends of the earth and behold they shall come with swift speed none shall be weary nor stumble among them in other words there'll be no weak or tired ones they'll come on and on and on none shall stumble nor sleep neither shall the girdle of their loins be loose nor the latchet of their shoes be broken whose arrows are sharp and all their bow their bows bent their horses hoofs shall be counted like flint and their wheels like a whirlwind their roaring shall be like a lion they shall roar like lions yea they shall roar and lay hold of the prey and shall carry it away safe none shall deliver it in other words they'll carry it away and nobody can deliver they can't pull it away they can't stop them and in that day they shall roar against them like the roar of the sea and if one look unto the land, behold, darkness and sorrow, and the light is darkened in the heavens thereof. What God is describing right there is judgment, you guys. For those of you who have not yet decided that God is worthy of your time, you better think twice. Because even if you don't think there is a hell, God knows how to bring hell right here on earth for those who don't give him a second thought, for those who don't have time for his ways, his laws, his percepts. You see, God knows his righteous ones. He knows his people. We have a mark on us. Even the demons know it. There's a mark. Our homes are holy ground because we're there God's presence is there. Because we live a holy life, we're not perfect, but we live a holy life. And for those areas where we fall weak, we're still striving, we're still pushing, we're still moving and living in, in the realm of God's mercy and praying for his strength on the inner man. We're striving, we're learning, we're moving towards perfection. Even though we'll never reach it till we get to the other side, we are still pursuing it. And we have a mark on us. So there are a lot of things we will escape. And I'm not saying we're going to escape all because we're not. But God's going to carry us through. You hear me? God's going to shield us. God's going to protect us. God's going to put his angels round about us. He's going to keep all evil as far away from us as the east is from the west. He's going to strengthen us on the inner man. So those of you who are in Christ, be encouraged. Be fortified. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Because your blessing is on you. You are blessed above all others. And yes, God may not be a respecter of persons, huh? but he's an inspector of persons. And what he inspects, he treats likewise. And when he finds him in us, there's a different treatment than when he finds him in you. Those of you who choose to follow the ways of darkness, those of you who choose to do the things you know the word speaks against and you make excuses, you rationalize, you talk about those of the old days, that's back then, it's not the same now. Things have changed. God's got to get in with the with the new crowd. He's got to understand that, that we don't do things like that anymore. Baby Cakes, God is the one who made you. He is the one who created you. And you, you have the nerve to shake your little puny fist up to an almighty God of the universe to tell him what you ain't going to do and what you are going to do. And then some of you just turn your back on him and write him off like he's not even there, like he's not even worthy of, of honorable mention. You've got the nerve to believe science and think that all this order, all this, all this uh, uh, method, all of this scheduling, all of this organization of, of organisms and body parts and everything knows what it's supposed to do. The ocean knows how far to come. The sun knows which path to follow. 
the moon knows what schedule to keep. And you think all that order came out of chaos. Well, I'm going to tell you something. When things start winding up and they have begun, this is the beginning of sorrows. When things start winding up and you start seeing the fulfillment of little children's dreams of meteors flying out of the sky, of Nibiru showing his ugly head, all these different things. The Bible speaks of wormwood. The Bible speaks of the end of the times ending in fire, not a flood. God promised us he would never bring a flood to destroy all of creation, but he never promised not to bring fire. He never promised not to destroy. See, you think that God is loving and merciful. He's kind, pretty much a patsy in many people's eyes who even believe in him halfway. But there's a side to God I don't ever want to get to know. And I felt his anger once in my life, and I stopped my nonsense real quick, too. I was in God, but I was dabbling, and God straightened me out. I felt that anger, and I straightened up. I didn't need to get a booty whooping. I straightened up real quick and got back in place, got back in my lane. But see, some of you, you think that you're big and bad enough to do whatever you want to do. And see, here's the thing. You see yourself as being so big, so mighty, so all that important that you don't realize the authority, the power God has. Some of you, you say you were born a homosexual. Well, I'm not going to argue that, but I'm going to tell you, God can change the, the spots of a leper. If you look at the story of Joseph and how he got played, okay, by his, by his uh, father-in-law, when it was time for him to go, God knew how to change the speckles on the cattle. He knew how to make the changes. He can do whatever. Anything you need inside of you, deep down, that's rooted, that's, in, that's in, embedded in your spirit, in your psyche, anything that's got you screwed up, tied up, tangled up. I don't care if it's hatred. I don't care if you got a lust demon. I don't care if it's homosexuality. I don't care if it's guilt because you had three abortions. I don't care if it's it. I don't care what it is. If, if you've been a prostitute, a pimp, or a drug dealer, or you've been all of the above, God can take your heart and change it. And all the things that you longed for, that you valued, that you treasured, you detest, you're sick of it, and you're ready for a change. And when you come to him, he starts making the changes. It doesn't happen all overnight, y'all. See, some of y'all, you got a magic wand religion. You think everything God's going to do in you is going to happen that first night on your knees when you ask God to, to, to bring Jesus into your heart. But when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, the process, the metamorphosis begins. The work is finished on the cross, but the work is working in our lives from the birth canal to the death, to our death. And when you look at everything that's coming and you look at the fact that things are out of our control, it's out of your control, this coronavirus. It's out of your control, the whole financial situation, the job situation. But it's in God's control, y'all. See, you think all this is happenstance and you're sitting there waiting with bated breath for the government to say, we'll come to your rescue. But I'm going to tell you something. You better start turning to God. You better start saying something to him. Start acknowledging him, ask him to give you time to decide whatever you need. Because I'm going to tell you, when things start happening, they're going to happen so fast, they're going to be like bullets coming out of a Gatling gun. You're not going to be able to catch up. With you'll be Your head will be spinning to your left. What? And then your head will be spinning to your right. Oh, no! And, and you won't know which way to go, which way to turn, what to do. 
You better get in line now because the worst is yet to come. And there will come a point when it gets so bad that God will pull his people. He'll snatch his people out of it. Will you be one of them or will you be here to see your behind fry? See, we don't realize God is loving. God is merciful. Yes, he gave his son. To, you know, to be the propitiation for our sins. Yes. All right. He gave us the ability to escape hell. Yes. He loves us. Yes. He'll love you all the way to hell. Yes. But God has a bad side, y'all. He says out of his own mouth in the word, I create good and I create evil. That means he also created the devil. However the devil came about to be the devil, God created the whole game plan. Now, there are no mistakes with God. So it wasn't like, oops, oh, how did this happen? No, whatever happened was God's plan. Because in order for us to live a life for him from our hearts, we had to have the freedom of choice. So God's not an ogre that's going to tell you, you better do this when you have no choice. He's fair. He's going to give us a choice. How do, how do we choose? Two opposing ends. Yay or nay. Good or bad. Light or darkness. God the devil good, evil, whatever the bottom line is, we have a choice. And your choice and the choices you make every step of the way, every hour, every day will determine how difficult or how much easier it will be going through this dark season we're entering. It's getting dark. The clouds are collecting, y'all. The lightning is starting to come over the horizon. And you're not seeing it. You're still on Facebook playing games, it, uh, uploading a whole bunch of silliness. You're laughing and joking. You want to eat, drink, and be merry. Yeah, you want to play your life away. But guess what? It ain't going to be happy time. It ain't going to be happy hour. Happy hour is going to come to a close. And life is going to bounce your behind on out that bar. Life is going to kick you to the curb. And the only one that can rescue you, the only one that can soften the blow, the only one that can ease your pain will be God Almighty. Nobody else, not the psychics, not the wizards, not the witches, not the brews, not the hexes, not the spells. None of those or not the potions. None of those are going to calm your nerves or, or heal your wounds or, or straighten your thinking out and give you direction and guide you away from danger's way. No, none of that's going to be there to help you. None of it. It's an abomination to God, but you keep calling it okay. You're okay. I'm okay. They're okay. That's okay. And that's okay. <laughs> and that's a stupid mindset that came up in the 70s and 80s. And it has done so many people wrong because it ain't okay. If it ain't okay with God, it ain't okay. See, you don't realize people are having dreams. We just got through discussing the dreams earlier. I had dreams of people in black suits and, and planes way off at a distance bombing. And the men in black suits were our people. But guess what? They were not wearing the uniform from our country. It was a uniform from another country that was running America. That's right. Davina just mentioned her son talking about uh, uh, uniforms with black and orange. Talking about all kind of stuff going on. We're going to go into those dreams later on this, this week. 
We're going to do videos on them because I believe it's God is bringing in dreams to start warning us and waking us up. Wake up, y'all. These are the last days. Time for pussyfooting and slipping and sliding in your lady's bed and, and, and hopping in your man's uh, bedroom or, your, or the other woman's husband's bedroom. It's time out for all that playtime. It's time out for all that mischief. This is the time to get it together. Because if you don't get it together, baby, something's going to tear you apart. Trust me. See, God can keep us in the storm. Like the brother mentioned, God can rise us above the storm. God can lift us up above our enemies. We can, we can ride out the storm, riding out the wind and all of that. All the resistance of the wind can end up being a form of transportation to get us from point A to point B. And God will give us wisdom and knowledge and discernment and all kind of goodies during this dark time. He'll shed the light on our pathway. But your lightness will be darkness. I don't care how bright it is. It'll seem dark to you. And the reason for that is because when you don't have the vision of God, you will grope in the noonday while we see plainly in the darkness. God will give his people all kind of crafty ideas and ingenuity to make it through this dark time with a smile on our face. That's right, because God will be our light. But even a flashlight won't help you. You'll be groping in the dark in your spirit. It'll be dark in your spirit when it's dark in your mind. That's a bad place to be. And we're looking at meteors coming. We're looking at volcano eruptions coming. We're looking at floods coming earthquakes coming. We're looking at all kind of craziness beginning to unfold. The earth is spewing up its shame. It's spewing up our sins against us. And we're not listening. We're not listening to what the earth is telling us. God speaks through nature as well as through people. Nature and and weird weather anomalies. Listen, watch, learn, because a lot of times your prophetic warning is in the weather. Pay attention to the weather. Please do. And pray and ask God to interpret it to you because he will have hidden messages for his people in the weather. And if he says, run, run. If he says, drive, drive. Don't go back in the house to get anything. Do what he says when he says it. That might be your only way of safety. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will lift up a standard against his enemy. But check it out. <clears throat> Let's say the enemy is coming in. And we don't know that another country is taking over America right? And there is a form of violence that's starting to break out here and there in pockets of the country. God may tell you, get in your car, get your purse, get your wallet. That's all you need. Put your coat on, put a bottle of water in the car and go. That's it. Don't look back. Don't try to get your documents. Don't try to get your suitcase packed. Go. Drive to the mountains. Drive to the ocean, drive to the park, drive to this city, drive to that city. Go to your mother's house in the state of Oregon. Go to your, to your brother's house, whatever. He may tell you, go here, go there, or stay in your house, lock your doors. Do not come out, do not peep through the window when you hear the ruckus. If it sounds like wild animals out there, don't peep through the window. Cover your house in the blood of Jesus and stay put. Whatever God tells you to do, you won't be safe if you don't have an ear to hear because you're not connected to the source. 
You'll be just as vulnerable to the elements, to everything that's going crazy and wild. You'll be swept up with the whirlwind that's going through this country, that's going through this world. If you don't have an ear peeled to God's chest, you're not listening for his voice, for his heart throb, for his direction. You can walk through a pack of wild animals that have been shaken loose by a zoo close by. And they're ready to pounce on your behind because it's two days past feeding time and they're hungry. And here comes the dinner bell, you. And you have no weapon. You didn't even see them coming. And now you're surrounded. And they're salivating. It's the time of darkness now. Right? Earthquake just shook them loose. You got to walk through a pack of wild animals. What are you going to do? You can't outrun them. You can't climb a tree. Guess what you can do? Say this. If you have them in your heart, you can speak them out of your mouth. I bind you in the name of Jesus. Lord, render me invisible. Protect me as I walk through this pack of animals. In Jesus' name. I bind you in the name of Jesus. I command you to stay away from me in the name of Jesus. And you keep walking. You keep walking. And you'll notice that the animals that were salivating and looking at you and glaring, waiting to pounce upon you, they no longer see you. They're wondering, well, well wait, what just happened? They're looking at each other with, with dumbfoundedness on their face. See, that's happened to me with packs of dogs. That's why I know the name of Jesus works in nature. But if you don't know it, guess what? Your dinner, your behind is going to be under the grind. It's over. Party's over, baby. So I'm asking you, draw close to God. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 7.14, if my people who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from, not turn to, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. Do you realize we could actually have our country healed? If the country would acknowledge God, if the country would call a fast, Pray, seek God's face, and would renounce its sins. Oh my goodness, do you know what could happen? It ain't gonna happen. Because you got the greedy, you got the selfish, you got the self-centered, you got the fat cats, you got those that are running the whole world like strings of a puppeteer. And I'm telling you, they relish having all the power, the greed, the glory, the money, everything. And they will oppress the world in order to stay on top. No, they're not thinking about letting go. And they only put those in power that are willing to be their puppets. So trust me when I say, this is the beginning of sorrows. And we are entering into the season of tribulation. The tribulation period is beginning. You may not want to believe it, but the Bible is true. I ain't getting into all the ins and outs of what's been tampered with, what's been put in and taken out and all that. But the living word of God is still alive. What God has put his stamp on in that word is alive, y'all. There are times I read the word and it brings tears to my eyes and ain't talking about nothing. It's just reading his word. It's feeding my spirit. It's a connection there, you guys. God can tell you things through his word. I knew I was going to leave the city I've been in since 1968 when God led me to scripture in his word that said, 
the Lord shall choose your inheritance for you. I was going through hell and God brought me to heaven on earth. I would never have thought to come here. I would have been clinging to what I knew. Clinging to what I had. Some of you are clinging to the sins. You're clinging, you're clinging to the sinful people, to the mischievous people, to the people who are negative influences in your life. You're clinging to abusive people, to narcissists who don't even know love if love kicked them in the butt. Because that's all you know. God is trying to rescue as many as he can even right here in the land of the living. But too many of you are turning a deaf ear, even many of his own children. Many of you. And I had the dream and I know God wants to discuss it. Many of you are still out there screwing around from bed to bed. You go to bed, you screw all week and then you get up on Sabbath or you get up on Sunday and go to church dressed in your church finery. And you do your church duty and you smile and praise God and happy Sabbath. Bless the Lord. Praise the Lord, saints. And you're living like a heathen all week. And you think that you have escaped because you said the sinner's prayer. Hmm. What did Jesus say? Many shall say to me, Lord, Lord. Many shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. And when they come up to my face, I'm, I'm loosely paraphrasing right now. I'm going to look at you and say, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. You think you can sin and praise and sin and pray and sin and give God glory and sin and play and imitate the whole church jargon. You dress like a church person. You waddle like a church person. You quack like a church person. And you ain't doing jack for God. You're not fooling him. He sees past the costume. He sees past the script. Because he's watching what you're doing in the middle of the night with sister so-and-so. He's seeing what you're doing in the middle of the night with brother so-and-so, with Mr. So-and-so, with, 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 with hot lips over there and sweet cheeks over here. He knows what you're doing. And you come to church and you pass out the, the pamphlets and you hug all the saints and you, you tell everybody, praise the Lord. Oh, it's good seeing you, brother so-and-so. Oh, bless the Lord. God is so good. All the time, God is good. God is good all the time. And you have all the little cliches going. Judgment is coming down the pike, big time. Judgment has begun and you're still playing games. When will it end? I don't want to see it end in hell. When will it end? You can stop the nonsense now and get in the ark of safety. But no, you got to have it your way. You don't want the Lord being a killjoy. You don't want the Lord ending your party. Oh, all I can say to you is wake up, wake up. You're entering into a dark season you have never navigated through before. And it's going to be a rough ride. If you don't have your Holy Ghost Jesus seatbelt on, it's going to be rough, dangerous, and harmful. And for many, it will be deadly. You think a whole lot of people have died so far? You wait till God really cuts loose on that army he was talking about that's unstoppable, that nobody will be able to deliver from, that he talked about in his word. That's his judgment. When he sends his judgment, baby, my hinds are going to fry. 
right here on, on this planet. You're going to think we have gone to hell. You got to be on the right side. God said in his word, death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? Death does not have to hurt. Death can be a simple doorway to go right into the eternal, everlasting presence of God. It can be a blissful experience, very peaceful. But if you're not in Christ, like the man that was in the hospital bed, he wasn't even out there in the streets getting his behind raked over the coal. He was in the hospital bed. He was an atheist. And he's sitting there screaming, the flames, the flames, they're getting hot, the flames. And he's trying to douse the flames as they crawl up his legs and consume him as he's being slowly, slowly, and so torturously introduced into his new eternal home. And then he dies. A horrible death. Grit with fear and pain from the flames. Yeah, you keep going the way you want to go all you want. I just feel for you. I won't even waste my time praying for you if you're not going to give a minute's time to pay attention. My prayers are for those that are winnable. Even God told the prophet, don't pray for these people. Don't pray for them. So I ask God, Lord, let me know who to pray for and who not to pray for so I don't waste my breath and don't waste my time. God bless you. Those of you who have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying.